Wow, 1,500 people. Good morning, NGConf. How's everybody doing today? That's what I like, energy, 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 energy in the room. So yeah, thank you for the introduction. Uh, today, build a form around it. Um, so I'm going to deconstruct uh, a bit about angular reactive forms. So let's get started. Let's get the, the boring stuff out of the way. Don't mind my little dating profile picture. Uh, my name is Sani Youssef. Uh, I'm a Google developer expert. That picture was taken at a conference, actually. So uh, yeah, Google developer expert on the web. Uh, so Angular stuff, and I do a lot of Ionic stuff as well. Um, I'm also an Angular Bootcamp instructor, so I go around parts of the States and part of Europe teaching people Angular. Lucky me. Um, I'm also building this great thing called UI School, so you can check that out, ui.school. I don't know how we pulled off that domain name, but yeah. Uh, and Avatar is the best movie of all time. You cannot say anything else. If you have not seen that movie, you, ne you need to. We cannot be friends. Exactly. The blue people, not that other thing. Yeah. Exactly. All right. So you can find me online at Sani Youssef. If you find anyone that looks this good with that username, just let me know so I can sue them. Thank you very much. Let's talk about forms. Forms, forms, forms. Forms actually have the ability to make or break your business. You never thought that was a form, did you? This is the most profitable form in the world. You use it every day. But you've never thought about it as a form, have you? Because you just go, you know why? Because it works. Whenever your form works, you don't think of it as a form. When it doesn't work, then you remember it's a form. <laughs> you use them every day as well. Facebook, Twitter, iMessage, WhatsApp. At every single point, every day, you're using a form one way or the other. But you don't think about it as a form. Why? Again, because it actually works. And that's the most important thing. So let us see some pretty terrible forms. Who wants to see some terrible forms? Exactly. Wow, so much negativity. Guys, I want to see terrible forms. Woo, Jesus. All right. Let me make my damn mistake first. Don't you know these forms when you just go www.somegreatwebsite.com and you haven't even typed anything and it's already telling you how this is wrong, that is wrong, you're going to die, this is just red everywhere. You need to put eight characters password. Like, let me type the bloody password first. Then you can tell me. And, and for any um, example I show, there's a stack links link you can see there uh, after. Don't let me submit if I'm doing something wrong. You should never let a user submit a form if you know that they're already doing something wrong. Why? Like, be very clear about the information that's mandatory, that you need. Because there's no point for me to submit a form if, for example, you need me to enter a password that's eight characters long. Don't let me submit the form and then come back and tell me you need eight characters password. Doesn't make sense. You're wasting my time. I'm going to go somewhere else and spend my money. Um, but there are some ex exceptions. Call to actions and acquisition buttons, those, there are some ex exceptions to, the, to this rule. Focus only on what I'm currently doing wrong. I know you have like 10 different input fields, but I want to just focus on what I'm doing wrong. Like if I'm, you know, this form here, I'm typing the last name. I haven't touched any other thing, but the form is already telling me I need to enter a first name. Like, can you just focus on what I'm doing, you know? So focus only, because users can only interact with one input field at a time. So that's very important. And, and it's important for you to know when the users are interacting, when they've touched something, when they've left. Very, very, very important. And, uh, an ex uh, order sometimes is an ex exception to this. So if you need users to fill your form in a specific order, sometimes you get like Facebook, for example. When you're using Facebook and you put your last name before your first name, the first name field would be red because like, hey, we need this because we need to spy on you. We really need this first name, you know. Uh, and this guy, this one, nobody likes that one. When you just walk into a page and you see this long form, think about taxes, you know? That's why nobody likes filling taxes. Because it's like, oh man. And it's like, if you refresh the page, you're doomed. And that kind of thing. So it's like, forms actually have a direct effect on how we feel. Because if a form is nice, you don't think about it. Like Google search. 
you just say, hey, help me, you know, do my work. Stack overflow, this, 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 that, that, that. And, and it works. But when it's too long or it's, it, it's making you feel some type of way, you, you, you don't feel inclined to fill the form. Another one is ensure that I only have to submit the form once. There is no point in the trip to the server and making me come back, right? So if I'm filling this form here, and you know, I choose a username and the first name, and then you're telling me, oh, by the way, that username is taken after I've clicked Submit. Uh, you could have just told me that, you know, uh, like told me, hey, this username is not available. It's been taken so that I can type a new username. Capiche? Don't let me submit. That's what I say. Don't do it. If you're building those types of forms, stop right now. Stop. Stop. Don't build those forms. How can we create better forms in Angular, right? How can we actually create better forms? Because this is an Angular conference. This is an Angular talk, right? I introduce you to reactive forms. If you have not heard of reactive forms, congratulations. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. Uh, and there are two types of forms in Angular. There is the template forms, please don't use. And, and we have reactive forms, please use. Uh, so what are the features of reactive forms? Reactive forms, they can observe. They're, they're observant. What do I mean by they're observant? They know when you're typing something. They know when you've touched the field. They know when you've left the field, you know? They know when the field is valid. They know when it's invalid. So it allows you to focus on just giving the user a great experience instead of like constantly meddling around. Think about jQuery forms. Those were the good old days, you know? Interesting times. Uh, they need to have empathy. You need to think like the user because your user is typing, say for example, uh, the user is typing something like a, an American phone number, and a lot, some websites say 334, correct? 334. But if the user just decides to type everything without the dashes, or maybe he decides to use a dash, maybe you should allow them. You can do that validation on your own. You, know, you can remove the dashes, because that's what they're used to. In the UK, in our postcode system, it's alphanumerics of four, um, three up to four, and then another alphanumeric of four, and most of the times you put a space. But if the user does not put a space, Forgive them, because you already have the rules. They should have empathy. You should empathize with the user. You should focus on what they're currently doing. You should be able to compose forms. Reactive forms are composable. You should be able to take some business logic from your you know, manager that doesn't want to give you a pay rise and just implement that, because you know, you know, managers, we need this by tomorrow. Come code it yourself. Uh, you know? They just think it's easy. Oh, this needs to happen. That's why we have a sprint. It's called a sprint. Uh, extend. They should be extendable. What do I mean by extend? Sometimes what forms do, the, the normal things that HTML gives you is not enough. So you need to extend to have maybe some custom logic, your own forms. Think of things like Ionic, where they have Ion text area, Ion input, because you, you need some, some specific uh, um, things. Reactive form building blocks. So let's look at the building blocks of reactive forms. Everything inherits from this granddaddy called the abstract control. That's the base abstract. You cannot create a member of that. But you have the form control, the form group, and the form array. So to get started with reactive forms, you just import the reactive forms module from Angular Forms, and you put it in your imports block, and you're good to go. All right, and that gives you a lot of things. So let's talk about the first one, which is the primitive, the form control. The form control is when you need to just bind one specific input element or some form element, just one, not in a group. You just need, like Google search, for example. It's just one input block. You can use a form control, and you create the form control at the instance, and then you bind it via the form control, um, what's it called, um, directive or uh, property that it comes from the reactive forms on your inputs, and then that would know how to add spe uh, specific things to the template. The next one is the form group, and this is the most widely used one. It works mainly with the form element. This is when you have an aggregated set of fields, you know, and you want to con con construct a form. Uh, it's used to aggregate group controls, and it gives you an object-based API. So you access the controls as an object. And this is what it looks like, actually. So you instantiate that, uh, you know, you instantiate the, the form group, 
and then you add a bunch of form controls. But actually, it's not only form controls you can add in that form group. You can also aggregate any abstract control. So it could be a form control, it could be a form group, or also a form array, which we're going to see shortly. That gives you real power to aggregate so many things. And the form array is basically just like a form group, but it gives you an array-like syntax. So if you have, like, for example, a bunch of pages, uh, page one, two, three, four, you like examinations, for example, and you want to keep states between each page, you can use a form array for that. And it's very, very similar to the form group. And it, the same thing with the form group, it not only uses the, uh, um, you, you don't only have to put form controls in there, you can also add any abstract control. So any one of those new could be a form group or a form array itself. So you can aggregate as much as possible. Uh, so you also have a declarative approach to forms where you can just declare using the form builder. And this is probably my preferred way of creating reactive form elements. Demo time. Da, 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 da. Hmm, copyright. Uh, I told you I was a Viking. Never seen a black Viking before, have ya? <laughs> exactly. So we're going to demo a couple of things. Value change, built-in validation, com composition, custom validation, and my favorite one, which is custom async validation. Who wants to see some code? Good. Who wants to see some code? That's more like it. All right. So let's go ahead. So the first thing we're going to see is I took time last night, you know, to build Twitter again. Exactly. I basically built Twitter. Uh, and you can see the state of the form right now here. So I'm going to end this slideshow here. And and I'm going to do this. So I built Twitter. And this is on Stack Blitz. You have access. And you can see the state of the current form. I can tell when the form is touched, invalid, pristine. Right now, it's pristine because I haven't touched it. But as soon as I touch something, you can see it's dirty now. You know? And it's, uh, uh, what's it called? And as soon as I leave the focus, it's now touched. And you can see the, what's it called? The Twitter count there. I can type, 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 and I can calculate that. So let's actually look at the code for this. So quickly. If we actually look at the code for this, the Twitter form control code, all I created was a form control. And this form control, I said, it has to be required. That's the validation rule that I set. So if it's not required, I cannot see uh, um, the validation would not succeed. And I'm also using AC, um, the observable here to use the value changes, which is what you use to check when a value of that particular form has changed. And I'm doing max character count. So I'm saying 280 minus whatever the current value's length is to see how many characters I have left. And on the HTML side of things, you can just ignore this bit. All I want you to focus on is here, where I bind that form control to that. And that's, though that particular form control has all those properties. Val valid, invalid, and things like that. And that's what I'm using to do um, the touch, untouch. I'm saying, if it's untouched, ngif. If it's valid, invalid, pristine, dirty. And there are other fields that you can use. You can check the state. You can check so many things. So this is how I pretty much just built this pretty quickly. And, and if I just remove that, here, you can see that the button is disabled. Why? Because the form is not valid. What makes the form valid? It can only be valid if all the validation rules are set. And that's why I uh, bound here the, uh, the disabled feature of the button to the, uh, the form control itself to its invalid property. So if it's invalid, the form is disabled. But as soon as it's valid, it becomes enabled, and I can submit. So let's move on to the next demo. The next demo I have here is this guy. Very, very, very popular. Because sometimes you don't want to validate on the form control itself. You want to validate on the form. So here, I need to make sure that the password and the confirmed password match. But they don't know about each other. They isolate. So the form control, the form group itself, is what would do that. And you can see a little table of each particular, um, what's it called, uh, form control. So if I say sunny at gmail.com, now it's valid. You can see the table. It's, been, it's, uh, um, it's still untouched. And as soon as I go out, it's been touched. It's dirty, and it's valid. Dirty means the value has changed. For password, I'm just going to put the most secure password, which is 12345. And, and you can see, confirm password is still invalid. right? And if I come here and I say A, B, C, passwords don't match. 
But you see that I waited until the user left the confirmed password to display that. So I waited until they untouched. I didn't just say, oh, the password's not matching. I'm like, just give me a chance to fill the bloody thing. You know? But when I go and write one, two, and you see the submit button is disabled. But if I go and write the most secure password in the world, one, two, three, four, five, suddenly the submit button is enabled. I don't need to wait for you to untouch because I want you to be able to submit as soon as they match. And let's go ahead and look at this code. Here, all I did is created a form group with some elements. And um, what I did is I just created a custom validator, which is a, just a pure function that injects in the form group itself. And all I'm doing is getting that form group, accessing the control called password, accessing the other control called confirm password. And I'm saying, if their values match, return null. That means we're good to go. Only return me an error if the values don't match. Sort of like a flip Boolean. And that makes sense. So I'm only returning something. The name of the error is passwords don't match. And if we look at the HTML here, what you do is you bind the form group property to the form group. And here you use the form control name. The form control name only works within a nested context of a form group. And you can have as many things. And that's how I'm able to do all these things. Like, does it have an error? Has it been touched? Does password, uh, so I'm here I'm saying, if it has an error called password match, and um, password has been touched, and confirm password has been touched, then I show the error. So that's all it is pretty much for that one. So I have the last demo that I'm actually going to show. And this one took a while, because I only fixed it like 10 minutes before this talk. So thanks to all the guys that helped me out, Chris, Maxim. There are these forms where sometimes you enter, I'll give you an example of what inspired me for this form. So I bought a SIM card the first time I came to America. And when I'm back, I need to like replenish the credit. But on the website, they don't allow me to enter a UK postcode. I'm like, that doesn't make, the whole, your whole business is about people traveling. Well, you don't let me enter a UK postcode. So I can't actually pay for stuff because your postcodes are five numbers while ours is different. So I have to actually physically call them. So, but it's very similar. When you're ordering some stuff sometimes, you want to know if people can deliver to you. You don't want to send that trip to the server. But you need to make a server call, a HTTP call. Angular Reactive Forms has something called async validators that would actually send a HTTP call and wait for you to come back to calculate the validity of a specific form control or form group. So let's use the zip code, for example. I've written this code where I only deliver to Beverly Hills, California. If you don't live in California, I'm sorry. You're not cool enough. So, so who does not live in California? Who can tell me where they live? Yes. OK, postcode, uh, zip code? 19. 130. So we did not deliver to your hood, sir. <laughs> not cool enough. Yes. And this is using a real API called Zipopotamus. Zipopotamus. Zipopa. Sorry, African education. It's not my fault. Uh, so that's the API. You just pass a postcode, and it returns you a bunch of things. Uh, but sir, let's, who lives in California? California, love. All right. Postcode, tell me where you live. 92604. So, sir. We deliver to you. Now I can take you. See Facebook? You can ask for people's information nicely, and they'll give it to you live on stage. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Very easy. Now I know where you live. <laughs> Thank you. So let's quickly round up and look at how that works. All you do is you create an async validator, which is just a function, and you inject stuff into it. I'm injecting HTTP because I need to make a real HTTP call. And I return a function that gives me access to the actual form control itself that I associated it with, with is the input zip. And I make that call. And if everything is good, I return an observable of no. But if I have a problem, I return an observable of something, which is, in this case, state delivery. Only delivered to California. Pretty cool stuff. And I think this is really good. And this is what you use to do things like check if a username is available or things like that. You can use something like that. So let's go back to the slides. Um, there we go. Look at me, Viking. Mama, I made it. <laughs> All right. So let's round up. Uh, to get started today, you can check all, every single thing I've demoed is on Stack, Stack Blitz. So you can go there and live check it out. Um, you can uh, check out the Angular guide. Uh, you can ask me a question on Sani Yusuf Twitter. You can follow me. I might not follow you back. 
I look kind of, I kind of look cooler if I have more followers than people I'm following. So I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. You can learn online because I'm teaching this stuff on UI school. Uh, you can learn in person at angularbootcamp.com if you want to come to one of our classes. And uh, without further ado, I would like to say thank you very much, NG Conf. 1,500 people. The pleasure is all mine. Thank you very much. <laughs> now, good day.